Okay, hopefully I've got that working. Um, just need to make sure everything's where I need it to be at the moment on this program known as OBS. So Ogin's telling me he can hear me. Grimsy is saying he can hear me. So hi, folks. Um, just a heads up, there may now not be a uh, Fright Night Friday tomorrow. Or at least not with me. Uh, can't say for Grimsy. I don't know if you're going to still do your Fright Night Grimsy. Um, only reason I say this is we were going to do Demonologist's new map. Uh, me and Ogin tried it out today to test to see if things are working ahead of stream. The new map won't even load for us. In fact, it throws up errors for Ogin and crashes my game for me. So we've discovered we can't use that. We can play other maps, but they're a bit laggy. So I'm not sure if I'll be doing it tomorrow. Um, if the other guys want to do their Fright Night Fridays, you know, please do pop over to their channels. Yeah. Um, as Ojin says, it was really laggy in Ghost Rooms. We were doing the hospital map, which is one of the older maps. And it was, I believe, a Huntu, was it? Huntu. Yeah. So we had a Huntu in um, hospital. And whenever ghost events were kicking off or it was trying to give us proof, it would lag badly. At one point, I thought it was my mouse losing battery. Because, I've, you know, as you know, I've gone now wireless mouse and keyboard. So I can kick back away from the computer a bit when I'm gaming. And you get a more relaxed atmosphere. Um, turned out it wasn't. The mouse was fine everywhere else, but when the ghost events were happening. So, yeah, uh, the game was a bit... Mm. Yes, Abandoned House was very unplayable. It lagged as soon as we got in the front door. So, I'm not sure if we'll be doing it, because the whole point was to review the new map of Demonologist. And that's... If the game's unplayable, we can't really review it. So that's our, our premature re review, I'm afraid. It's currently unplayable. I do understand that they are trying to fix it. I have been over onto their Discord. They have said they're trying to fix it, but obviously it's going to take time because they're not 100% quite sure what the problem is. As it is with tech. So I, I wish the guys at Clockwork Games the best of luck because I know it can be a bit of a headache because it can be sometimes just one letter or a brackets bar out of place that causes the whole thing to go crazy. So good luck, guys. <laughs> I hope you do get it fixed because I do like to play your games. Okay, so we're continuing on with Horace Heresy today. So as you may remember, we had to fix this guy. Um, bring him up to the camera. We had to fix him. I have repaired his sword a bit. It's, it's not really where I wanted his sword to be positioned. Uh, he's not fully repaired, so I'm still going to be doing some work on him off stream. He still feels a bit soft for some reason. I don't know why he feels soft. I've, I've never really had a mini that feels soft. So if anyone's ever had a mini that feels soft, can you let me know what that actually means with these? Do I need to be sending him back or what? Um, but I was going to do some green stuff around where it broke to reinforce that. And then remodel. I still can't believe how soft he feels like half dried clay. It's the best way to describe him. He's really soft. But not so soft that you can move him, but you can it's like a tacky soft. And I know it's not the stuff I've I've sprayed him with. Because I've sprayed this with the same stuff and that is not tacky. Um so I'm not really sure what's going on with him. It's a shame because he was a fun model to paint. But he was full of air bubbles and his resin, his fine cast resin, is pretty brittle. I believe that's coarse wane. Yeah, yeah so, so, this is, so this is coarse wane, the paladin. So if anyone wants a heads up with that, especially Games Workshop, if you're listening, Splash Forge World, even though I know you're the same company. Um, coarse wane, I, I don't know if it's a batch problem or if it's you guys still being lazy with the, the resin. I know your history, guys. Come on. I'm old enough to have been around from when you first got created. So we're going to try and do some repair with him off stream. He needs a little bit of finishing up, just some highlights. This is the Moritat we were working on yesterday. So just a few more highlights and he should be done. Just needs varnishing. And we're going to actually start on the Leviathan. Now, you actually saw me assemble this in the YouTube video. So sorry, I'm still used to looking up there for the camera. The camera's here. So we're going to 
finish him off. Um, I'm trying to get it in both cameras at the same time so you can see him here and here, here, here. <laughs> there you go. Um, I'm going to finish him off and start getting him painted up. Uh, he's in a black coloration, I believe. And we're going to try and finish up those bases as well. We're also going to try and start work on our first prey tour. So we will see how that goes. Keep in mind, these are Ojin's armies, not mine. I like space walls and things. So here we are. Uh, that's the Dreadnought. Although I don't think it's that colour scheme we're using, is it? No. The white there, uh, the white down there. So you want it, instead of where the checkered is, it's the white patch. So he wants this version of him. Hopefully, I won't drop the book while I'm doing this. There we go. Ah, uh, there. <laughs> so he wants that version. I'm still seeing red checks. I said without the red checks. So we're not doing the red checks. See there? It's white. We're just doing plain white with the logo. Plain white again. Good, because I hate checks. Yeah. All right. Okay. Pop that there. So I've got a reference tool. Ow. I've got a scape of the head, the brushes now. Landing on me toesies. It's a dry brush that's escaped that went under the chair. Everyone else is accounted for. So this is my red maple set. Uh, the most used is this one, the number one. Probably going to need some more ones. Oh no! I, I put that on so carefully. We have splayed bristles. The drama of paintbrushes, folks. The drama of paintbrushes. I haven't even started painting yet, and already I'm having to fix a paintbrush that is now so splayed that there's no returning that to its original form. Let's get these cut off so they're out of the way. rest of it is salvageable. But when they bend backwards, there's no salvaging it. Let's just get that a little bit wet. Oh, I knew I left something out of reach. Right, let's get this sponge. Give it a little twist to get them back trained. There we go. So it's now back to its proper brush shape. <laughs> Ow! I'm going to be turning that down. But yes, yes, that, that is how I felt just now, having discovered the brush in its splayed state. So I'm going to see who does that, because unfortunately my multi-chat feed that I see does not tell me this. So who did the scream in my ear or so I know who to annoy later. Lone Wolf. Thank you, Lone Wolf. Thank you for making me go deaf in my left ear and placing in a sound alert how I felt at finding it all splayed. <laughs> so I'm going to go put my background music on that hopefully you guys will not be hearing. Nothing against music on stream, especially for painting streams. But... I will be uploading this to YouTube later, so I will be putting my own custom music onto it. Ooh, motivation for an hour. That should keep me going. Loop it. There we go. Oh, I've got a message as well. Oh, okay. Right. It's just notifying me the app's going to be updated soon. So. Oh, right. Where's my sound alerts? Oh my goodness, no wonder I'm going deaf. They're up at like 300%. Wow, ouch. Now I know why I have tinnitus. Okay, so the beauty of doing painting streams as well is I don't have to have everything miniaturized. So right in front of me, I can see my OBS and where it's going wrong. I actually need a bigger brush for this. Um, hmm. Um, hmm. 
So the fine brush kit for this guy, not big enough. You put them over there. I'm actually going to have to use an old Citadel dry brush. But we don't want it dry, so give it a little bit of a soak. Prop that across the glass so I've got some space. Okay, that's just glue. Uh, some painting handle. I will be getting back to these, don't worry. I've got to get them ready for their second layer of dry brushing. Put them there. Put those there. Placement brush is there. Now I'm looking for Abaddon Black. I have placed it somewhere in my paint set. Uh, because I've got a book right next to me, I can't reach my paint set. That's now the only problem with my office being the sofa to the side of me. <laughs> Everything falls on me. Right, so we know he's black and silver. We'll we'll get his base coat done first, then we'll worry about colour schemes. Right. <sighs> Yoink the paint set over. From that lot over there. I know Abaddon Black's in here somewhere. There it is. Oh good, it's got paint agitators in, so even if it has got the consistency of clotted green cream, I didn't quite hear it. That wasn't loud enough. Try it with headsets, Lone Wolf. Try it with headsets. You're mean. Right. So we've got the wet palette over there. Bits and pieces here by the camera. We will get back onto them so they can just wait over there a minute. I need somewhere to put the painting handle again so that can go there. Okay. Let's brush for horrible jobs. I think we'll put some of this into the palette itself. Because we're going to be using such a big brush. Ooh. Ooh, I'm going to need more Abaddon Black. And since we're going to be using Citadel colours. That brush for horrible jobs, we can go and have a soak over there. Where did I put the kitchen towel? All the way over there. I need stretchy arms. Kitchen towel. Plop it down there so I can reach it. So for those wondering, the difference between a wet palette and a dry palette. A dry palette is technically for dry brushing. Honestly, this is better than a dry palette. There is the traditional palette, which is just a little thing with nobbles in, which is something like that. That's a traditional palette. A dry palette is something like this, but it is used dry. And it's basically a super absorbent piece of kitchen towel for dry brushing. Now, I do have dry brushes, but I'm going to honestly say, I use this and a bit of that, <laughs> just easier. But I also use this for drying off my brushes and all sorts. So we're just going to pop that over there while we get this nice and evenly spread onto this brush. I don't want it too thick, which is another reason for using a wet palette. Not only does it keep your paints moist for a longer period of time, it means you can close your paint pots not waste your paints to them drying out but you can also spread them out and get a nice even coat onto your brush so that you can brush something like this down now i was originally going to airbrush this but i'm at the point of do i really want to go and get my air compressor out right now make a horrible noise on stream spray the thing know that i need to set up near a, a window because i really don't want to be wearing a respirator for three and a half hours <laughs> Um, so once I've got things properly set up, the airbrush will be returning for the bigger models, for the much, much bigger models. But for these, I'm actually going to attempt for the first time in many years to paint them by hand. So this may be a terrible job, people. I warn you ahead of time. 
I put models together like the Titanic and DeLorean from Back to the Future and a couple of other things. Yeah, I do all kinds of minis at the moment, though. Um, it's Dark Angels from Horus Heresy. Ojin wants a working army up so that he can get back into the hobby, something to do to help him with his depression and anxiety. Um, if I do join him, I myself will probably do Space Wolves because I do like the Space Vikings. Um, but I also do Dean. Gary and Frecky. Say their names correctly. Um, so, yeah, I will probably do Space Wolves. I also like Eldar for their purples. I think it's their vibrant colours I like. Um, but I'm more of a Warhammer fantasy type of girl. I, I used to be a Wood Elves player. I don't like what they've done with it now. <laughs> so I haven't played in a long time. I, I dropped 40k and Warhammer back in 2011 when they started going a bit doolally with their fine cast. I still hate fine cast. So, you know, I love the detail. I hate the resin plastic because no paint on this planet wants to stay stuck to it. And it's also really, 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 really brittle and full of air bubbles. Um, I also do some D&D minis when they pop up. Um, but, you know, the biggest scale I'll go up to is probably the Land Raider style tanks from 40k. I don't like doing big models. I used to get told off at school for, they give me a whole piece of A4 paper and I'd, I'd take the tiniest corner and do my picture in that. <laughs> I've always liked to paint and do art really, really small. And people hate me for it because they can't see it. They need magnifying glasses. Truth be told, I need magnifying glasses to see my own art. I just like doing really dainty things. I'm really into World War II things. In mod yeah, uh, that's a point. I haven't had one of those in ages. The last time I did anything with that was a panzer tank, I think. Wow, and that would take me back quite a quite a bit. I also used to do Total War, which is the Rome stuff. Um, I am thinking about some Shogun models, if anyone wants those painting. Although I'm not doing commissions yet. Wait till I get everything off the ground tax-wise, and I will start doing commissions again. Also, you know, doing Ojin's Warhammer is getting me back into painting habits. I used to be an airbrush painter, but I'm getting back into basics. So yeah, let's get let's get painting. So yeah, I mean if you have painting questions, feel free to ask. If I don't know them, I will point you to someone who probably knows better. Why is there a spider living on this? I haven't even started I took you out of storage. How did you get there and make a nest in under an hour? Excuse me while I yell at the spider and then gently coax it out. Come on. Out. Out. You can tell I'm really not scared of spiders. I'll get rid of all that spider's nest. Honestly, leave something unattended in this house for a minute and they move in. Oh, wow, I need one of them. Never things on your. Oh, these? Ah, oh, I can't remember what it's called now. Ah. Oh. oh, Jin, can you remember what this thing I'm wearing on my head it is? By name. name it. Yeah. It was Ojin that found it for me, actually. And it's been a. Gr it means I don't have to have one of these great big magnifying glasses. And I can change these bits out. So I can have different levels if I want them. And I can just move them to where I can get them focused. A head magnifier. So Ojin says it's a he head magnifier. And I believe. Um, I'd ask him to post the link, but I know he's busy as well. Um, but yeah, it's a professional head magnifier. You get them on Amazon. I do warn you, you do need to find the right adjustment for it to sit on your head without giving you a headache. I've discovered, for me at least, um, the best... Thank you, Ojin. The best way to wear it is to have one of those headband warmers around your head that, that pulls your hair back a bit. Um, because it gives you that little bit of a couple of centimetres of buffer to allow you to not have it too tight on your head and give you a headache. Now, can we see this? Kind of. I, I don't know what's gone on with this camera, but ever since an update yesterday, its zoom is now completely broken. 
Hang on a minute. Is that not... Oh, it is. That's okay, then. I was worried that the paint wasn't sticking, then it was just running off. I was thinking, oh my goodness, am I going to have to put some hodgepodge on next? Ah! Oh, Mike, what have you done to me? It's Mod Podge. Mod Podge, not Hod Podge. Oi. So this is hopefully just a black base coat. If I'd have known I was going to paint in black, I'd have used chaos black paint. Well, that bit's going to be white, that much I know. Finer brushes can get into there, so we won't worry too much with that. I may have watered down the paint just a little bit too much. Oops. And the reason for watering down the paint is because you don't want it too thick to take out the details. So it's probably going to take a couple of coats. And where this brush can't get, I will come in with a slightly smaller brush in a minute and get it with that instead. I'm actually using a brush that is traditionally used as a dry brush to get the areas quicker and more evenly. So yeah, anyone that wants that headband, although it's not a sponsored link, the link is currently up in the chat. I don't know if it's fed over to Kick. But uh, it is on Twitch. It's the only problem with using Restream is you it, Kick doesn't fully support everything from Restream. Twitch kinda does. So we're not going for a perfect. What's it here? We just want a watery black. I've actually got a metallic black that I will be doing over as a wash because it's an army painter paint and they are as thin as water which is about as thin as I'm doing this coat as well as it happens actually all right so the blades are silver okay felt the paint cracking in my mouth then yuck Oh, I do apologise. The feed gets laggy. It is due to weather conditions here. Um, we've got a bit of a blustery one in at the moment and it tends to interfere with the power lines, which of course in turn interferes with our internet connections. And if it rains, our internet connection gets flooded because BT are terrible at planning where they're going to put their relay points around here our relay point is as far down the valley as you can get and it gets all of the flood water off the roads directly into that exchange point flooding it you can see the problem yes you can get them as glasses and all sorts so you know you can get the uh, headbands um in whatever fits best for you actually so yeah Yeah, he found it by sheer chance. We were looking for brushes and then he found it and went, oh, that would be perfect for you. I went, you know what? Yeah, it would. Because, you know, I'm getting old person eyes now. It does. Let me just get that. So, yes, the headset comes with these. You get a selection of sizes. Ah. Paintbrush paint. Ugh. <laughs> Get off my tongue. 
horribleness. It also comes with its own little cleaning cloth. So I've got paintbrush on my mouth. Blech. Right, so yeah, it comes in a range of sizes. So I believe I'm wearing the plus three. Yep. Hang on, actually. Nope, sorry, I'm wearing the plus two. Which I've now got to try and fit back in. <laughs> it just pop in like that. Comes with its own cleaning clock thing. I'll get that bloody bit of paint in a minute. So this is the plus three five. Which I've just put fingerprints all over. I've got a plus. There, this is the plus three. Plus one five and a plus one. And I'm wearing the plus two five. So, yeah. You get. So it's a one. A 5.5, .5, a 2, a 2.5 and a 3.5. Although I've got a 3.5, which is weird. A 3 and a 3.5. Ah. Okay, somebody put the wrong ones in. Oh <laughs> well. Bonus. I use the 2.5 anyway. And you can just sort of adjust them to how you need them so you can get it to focus. Although it does come at a cost, especially if you're like me and you're a bit long-sighted. <laughs> you lose vision about a, a half foot in front of you so everything goes flying so you'll be sort of peeping through the tops and under the edge so if you see me doing this it's because i'm forgetting that i can just do that <laughs> but yeah it's it's one i mean i'm not trying to i'm not going to promote a particular brand you need to find the ones that work for you um, if I did have a particular brand, they would have to sponsor me. Um, but, yep. So I, I do highly recommend that you, you get some kind of magnifying glass if you're into minis. Especially if you've got sight problems. Be it long-sighted, short-sighted, a bit of both. You know, if, you, if your eyes, for whatever reason your eyes have, because there's many, many reasons, that you can't really focusing on the small things without aid magnifying glasses of some type really 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 are a must Ugh. still not off my tongue Ugh. there thank you get off my tongue ick curious as to where the white paints come from on this i'm having to keep a half eye on this because he's not exactly stable on his temporary base even though i put enough glue on there to glue down a titan his base is currently locked in a box because i've already assembled it and painted it because i did him up one from scratch so that he can walk on rocks and have the rocks to counterbalance him and keep him in position. Because believe me, these things are a little top heavy and they love to fall over. Nothing more annoying than spending hours painting these things topple over and watch them shatter because the glue couldn't hold them together. Yeah. And I don't know what GW's obsession is with having multiple, multiple, multiple tiny bits that are entirely unnecessary on these things. These things are huge and you need magnifying glasses to glue them together in some parts. And then their instructions are worse than Ikea's if you rub them down with water. We glued him overnight. Yes, yes, we did. So little fiddly bits. Yes. Oh my god, yes. That's good for that. This thing is absolutely great for the, the fiddly bit. I'm already mostly way through my Abaddon black already. Good grief. Shows when you did lion, it? Oh, do not get me started on the lion. As much as I loved painting that model, he was a nightmare to put together. The detail. Yeah. I, I do think Games Workshop have gone a little overboard with details where it's unnecessary. It's like having really pretty detail on the inside of your insulation. It's like, why? 
not necessary. I think my drop wet palette this time is just going to be black. I've had it turned to pieces. I mean, if you ever saw my first video of painting, I've just put some Dark Angels green on there, as in a really thick version of Dark Angels green. Left it for a couple of minutes, forgot that I'd put a load of water in, came back and the whole thing was pea soup. It was like I was opening the Harry Potter Leaky Cauldron menu. And I'm doing a model where I'm really, really tempted to go, you know what? I'm sick. I want my airbrush. Because <laughs> I could get every angle of this in seconds with very little paint. I don't think my neighbours would appreciate the noise at this time of night. And with the wind, it would uh, be a bit of a nightmare to go sit over there in the corner. And you guys wouldn't get to see it because my cameras aren't wireless. And I currently do not have a laptop. Laptop I had died very quickly because of overuse. And by overuse, I mean it had to store everything from my time of work, when I was working, to everything... To gaming it really did see a lot of use for a very short amount of time and with it being what it was it burnt out very quickly i won't name the company they'll probably say i'm defaming them but i will say this much it began with a d right, so i'll put you in there to soak and we'll go get the apple wabadon black again where did i put it Right in front of me. See, this is what I mean. You can't see for specs. Am I going to have to put some paint thinner in there? Yeah, I might have to. Let's brush for horrible jobs. Come here. Get you cleaned off again. Well, even after I cleaned you off, you're still turning my nice, clean, rinse water black. It's going to be a very dark thing today, I think. Brush for horrible jobs. This bludge, this paint out of the lid. Back onto the wet palette. So, for those wondering, brush for horrible jobs are retired brushes. And by retired, I mean if you had a fine detail brush that's splayed out and it's no longer fine detail, it's now a general brush. In this case, this was once a wash brush. It's splayed out so much that it causes air bubbles in the washes. So it's become a brush for horrible jobs, which is everything from paint mixing to green stuff. Yeah, we're going to have very black water today, I think. Flickery lights. So yeah, if I disappear suddenly, it's probably because I've lost power due to weather. Or the internet cut out due to weather. So know that I'm probably okay, and if I'm not, I will be posting it up on various other things, letting you know my welfare level. I don't know if this is a name storming. Shock of horrors, I haven't checked UK weather today. <laughs> I've been absolutely fascinated by the supercells going over America at the moment. So those of you in America, in supercell areas, I do hope you are safe. Even my ex. So, yep.
those of us in the UK, it's brawly inside out weather. It's storm ca I'm sorry. The irony of that name does not escape me as a Star Wars fan who feels very betrayed right now. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> Without bursting into evil cackles. This storm that's hitting us, Ojin, is Storm Kathleen. <laughs> And so you know, anything with Disney we call Disneyverse, not Star Wars. And the reason for that is it's not written by George Lucas. It's not directed by George Lucas. Ergo, it's not canon, it's Disneyverse. An eye on that, that's a bit wobbly. I'm not reading that out, out Ojin, but I agree. Too worried if I ruin these brushes. I've had them since 2011. They're a bit run down anyway for dry brushes these days. Plus, I have new dry brushes in the wings, so it's all okay. So I can abuse them with their painting. Oh my goodness. There's actually an area that didn't get. Oh. Ah, no, let, let's, let's not bite that. We've already had that argument. Dampen this brush. Get some Abaddon Black and get right in there. There's an area where it's not been primed. I don't know how that's happened, considering I prime these while they're on the sprue. Before they are assembled. Unless, of course, it's the white we primed it with and then I reprimed over with green. Black seems to be sticking, so it might be primed with white. If not, I do actually have a primer hiding in my paint set. It's actually an airbrush primer. I don't rub paint on my eye, why my eye itches. This is actually one of the reasons why you want two sets of brushes. One with short bristles, one with long brushes. bristles. The long bristles can get right in gaps that ones with short bristles can't. And short bristles are fantastic for detail. So that's why it's always good to have two types. Of course, you're going to find that you're going to have a brush that you use more than any other. For me, it is the size one general brush. I go through those like kids in the candy store eating all the candy mostly because I actually do models that absolutely destroy them it's 
So yep, if you do get into mini painting, be aware you will be spending a small fortune on brushes and paints. Unless you're an airbrusher, then you'll probably just be spending it on cleaner and parts and paints. I'm not too worried about completely covering it in black because there's some of these places that are going to end up silver. So them being slightly based doesn't bother me too much. I am using the headset on my head so that you, my voice follows me around and you can hear what I'm saying. I was using the overhead mic yesterday for a bit, but I spent more time off so far away from it. Nobody could hear me. I also apologise to those of you that may be noticing my accent shifts. Uh, I was playing Zoo, Planet Zoo earlier, and uh, there was a very Welsh accent being used. And uh, of course, because I am formerly Welsh, I say formerly accent wise, you know, you can't place, change what you are, obviously, you are who you are. Um, uh, so I, I may end up switching accents because I am one of these people that picks up accents. Especially if it's an accent that I have been exposed to as a child. So the Yorkshire accent is another one I pick up quite quickly and some of the Scottish accents, particularly the Dundee accent. I'm sorry, Brush, you're going to have to take some abuse. You cloned it. I cloned what? Hey, Black Fox, I'm late to the party. Nah, you're fine. So what have I cloned? My, wait, are you hearing me twice? Yeah. Oh, do you mean oh, accent? No, I didn't clone it. I actually originally had a Welsh accent. Welsh Yorkshire accent, actually. Um, I used to get bullied quite a lot of it, a lot at school for it by my head teacher back then no less he really hated my mixed accent and would really he would tell me to speak proper english like the devon accent is proper english no offense to other devonians to whom i've become naturalized but um that's not proper english either you are definitely not, ain't proper english i'm sorry it's almost southern american in its sounding in fact, the Southern American accents are probably <laughs> um, mutations of the Devonian accent, actually. It's like a pirate accent. Ooh, arr, with a slight, slight twang to it. But I think the Southern accents in America also picked up the French twang as well. But, um, yeah. I used to get bullied quite a lot by my teachers. Bear in mind, this is another era. If teachers did that now, they'd lose their job. Back then, they could still hit you. And that was back in the 1980s and 1990s. But I'm glad to say it was put, you know, in the 1990s, they did put a big stop to it. Corporal punishment became a thing of a past. But I am writing a memoir of my history because, you know, I'd like to move on from my past traumas. But I'd also like people that are suffering similar traumas to know how they can themselves move forward. You don't have to stay stuck in the mantras of your abusers. I was told I would amount to nothing from a young age just because of my accent. And then they discovered I had dyslexia on top and it was just a nightmare. Instead of teaching me, they would just renegade me to the back of the class and call me the troubled child. 
troubled because they wanted me to do things I couldn't understand because they wouldn't explain it to me. They were bad teachers. I'm sorry. A child that can't recognise numbers because of dysgraphia, which is it's now named, is where number where fi yeah writing on a piece of paper won't stay still. And uh, I would ask, what is it that quite could they explain the task to me? They wouldn't. They would just say, go look it up. Or if I needed the spelling to a word I'd never encountered before but knew how to say, go look it up in the dictionary. Okay. How's that going to help a child with what was just then, you know, generically dyslexia? It's now dysgraphia, dyslexia, dyscalculia, a whole host of other things actually on top. I think there's even... I mean, it's, we call it the dis family. It's a, it's a group of learning disabilities, often interconnected, sometimes not at all interconnected. Depends on the person. They just decided I was the troubled child and that was it. I was written off. And that's not to say all my teachers back then were awful. Some of them were not. Some of them were absolute godsends. But some, well, two in particular, actually, were just evil. And they even encouraged my peers to bully me as well. So my peers ended up becoming the victims of a child who was frustrated and fed up with being bullied acting out. Now, I'm sure you know how children of the age of four and eight can act out and it can be quite violent so my classmates were quite often the victims of me react becoming a reactive person to try and stop the bullying because that's how i thought it worked because grown-ups weren't much use to me back then i'd learned i couldn't trust grown-ups but uh the slightest thing could set me off because i'd learned to react instead of problem solve so i do feel sorry for my back then classmates because they had to survive that themselves but equally you know some of them were bullies and i hope that they've learnt that what they did as kids was just evil but I want them to know if they ever do tune into this. I forgive them. They were horrible times. It was a different era. And I hope that becoming an adult has taught them just how terrible life can really be. I learnt it from a young age. And by terrible, I don't mean that they had to experience it firsthand. I mean that they, you know, they just realised or they became enlightened. I remember it from Halo. They were, there was both victims and bullies. Ah, oh, the Halo incident. I'm I'm never going <laughs> to... Oh, I always remember that. That one guy that was picking on me because I was a girl gamer and I was British. Like, how dare someone that, with a different accent and be female be playing Halo? And he says to me, and I remember Shio, Duo and the rest of the gang being there, as we're in the middle of our base on Blood Gulch, oh, sorry, Coagulated, as it was then called, um middle of our base i was guarding the flag he comes over he hits me in the back because that was an instant kill on on halo and he says go back to your own country after hours of racial and gender targeted abuse and he wondered why i died in giggle fits at that very moment he said go back to your own country and i was like what dude you think only america has the internet I'm in the UK. And of course, the Canadian, the other Americans, and everyone else laughed. But that gay guy, that guy, became the target of us from that point on. We left the rest of his team alone and just made sure that he had a terrible game thereafter. We responded to him as making him the first one we'd snipe. First one we'd assassinate, 
the first one we'd uh, hit with the flag and all the other ways you can possibly have to respawn in Halo. That was so funny. No, I don't think I had a Welsh accent during Halo. I think I picked up the Yorkshire accent again during Halo, if it was 2005-ish. Because all the Yorkshire family had been down due to sad circumstances that I won't go into. But, um, yeah, I'd, I'd re-picked up the northern accent from that side of the family. Or that part of the family, I should say. Because a lot of that side of the family also reside in Wales. Um... Yeah, so. I think it was the warthog on the other side of the map looking after their flag. Yeah, I think I blew that up with the wraith twice. Not the wraith. Scorpion. Oh, grief, I'll get my human, my covenant weapons the right way round. If it wasn't the scorpion, I was definitely in the banshee. If I wasn't in that, I was definitely holding the rocket launcher or the shotgun. But yeah, we, we made sure that he knew that bullying other players based on their uh, gender and uh, location was not a good thing to do. I'd have had no issue with him otherwise. I wouldn't have cared. I could deal with the then harassment I was getting. Oh, you're a girl. How dare a girl be playing a boys game? Oh, wait, wait, what? There's, there's boys games? Wow, so what am I supposed to be doing? Combing hair of Barbies? Wow. Sorry, not all girls are into that. Some of us actually like what are considered stereotypically boy things. We're called tomboys. And even then, you know, people should just enjoy stuff. It shouldn't really be gender-based, this or that. It should just be just entertainment and be done with it the only reason i used to like boys stuff is because it was rebellious i was told that girls couldn't do this girls couldn't do that you're a girl you're not allowed to do this so i'd do it out of spite girls aren't allowed to climb trees climb a tree girls aren't supposed to roll around in mud and make bases okay roll around in mud and make bases it was out of spite back then i have to admit of course it didn't help that in my age group there were only two girls. We were best friends for a while, then we weren't. That's how life goes. And uh, yeah, that, that meant all I had to play with was boys. There were a lot of boys in my village at that time. So yeah, it was either play with the boys or be really, 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 really bored. And that's before we get into my aunt trying to give me an exorcism because I refuse to play with Cindy dolls and Barbie. Oh, yeah. How dare I not be girly. Boys had dolls as well. They were called Action Man. Yes. Yes, they were. I mean, when the guy told you to go back to your, I mean, when the guy told you to go back to, back, I was just told to babysit the flag. So I was in the warthog, holding, hiding behind the rock up the, oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. We told you to keep annoying them with the flag so we could flush him out. Yes, if I, I have beef with you in a game, you will become my target. I was a very, very mean Halo player. I also remember that one time I used my feminine wiles as well. That was funny. That was really funny. Duo, Shio, and Kilo here were in on it. 
walking into the middle of the base and saying just four words and I had all of the enemy team trying to get my name, number and address and that allowed the rest of them to get in and uh, let me see all right steal their flag win the game such and such yes I weaponized my gender that, that's what we did that is honestly the power us girls do have and we need to recognize that And yes, that doesn't shoot. It does actually include people that have become female, despite birth associate uh, birth gender of birth. If you know how to flaunt yourself, you you have the same power. Heck, guys do, especially if they've got a well turned That's body. That's what you want, isn't it? Yep. To be mine. Just Forever. like Neil Newborn puts it there as Asterian. What's the wreck? What's the redeem to throw things at Ojin? It was that one, but I don't have anything currently to throw at him. I really don't want to throw my one and only paint sponge at him. It'll get covered in cat hair. And then I won't be able to use it as a paint sponge because I'll be getting cat hair on everything. At curiosity, while you're here, Dommy, is Demonologist working for you, or is it just as laggy and broken for you too? Because a lot of us can't get on the new map. What I might do is I might find a spongy D20 that I can keep throwing at him. Yeah, I was on it this afternoon and I couldn't I kept loading in under the map. It was a little bit annoying. Ojin couldn't load it at all. Actually, who did re was that Dommy that redeemed that one? Because I've purposely turned off the sound alert thing on my multi chat so that you guys have a half chance of um, getting me with the jump scare. And I say half chance because unfortunately, Demonologist has immunized me to jump scares. <laughs> Although, to be fair, I am notoriously the hardest person to jump scare. Maybe make me deaf, but not jump scare. Grimsy, you want to check yours. That was Dom's for that one. 
What? Oh, I think for the Asterian one, for the reclaim of that. I really would like this one to last just a little longer than that. I'm back on League of Legends. I don't blame you. I haven't really, really been able to get back into that myself. But, you know, when I did play it for a little while, it was fun. I'm doing it with the job brush for horrible jobs because, well, if I keep on with the one, I'm going to splay it out again after we just repaired it. So I'd rather do a brush that's already damaged and force the paint in that way. Um, MXR, I have lost 175 bucks and lost all avenue. Yep. Honestly, with some of the stuff he was doing, I'm surprised it took this long to happen. It's not that I don't feel sorry for him. He's been having a right hard time of it. But he's just not careful enough. And I hate to say it, if it's on YouTube, YouTube is a bit racist towards Asians. So, yeah. MXR needs to find another way of making revenue, like Patreon. So that he can uh, get his revenue from his members, rather than relying on the rubbish that is the other platforms who just look to, to rip off their users at every given opportunity. And yes, I do count Twitch among that. Telling us we get 50% of our membership revenue when we don't. Life as a streamer and a content creator is actually pretty darn difficult. One of the reasons I will not be relying on it when I finally get myself sorted as a source of income. So 
speaking of, I'm thinking about designing a line of t-shirts for the Lone Wolf Clan where proceeds will go to charity. already how splayed job brush for horrible jobs has gotten doing this i'm glad i'm not using my one now themes on etsy sell like hot but oh they really do yeah i'm not a hundred percent a fan of etsy but etsy does have its uses that would be one of them only reason I'm not 100% fan of Etsy is they don't monitor properly for con artists. I'm not that I can say that Amazon do much either, but at least they've got a better thing in place to discourage and dissuade and remove. I hope that's not one of our bins blowing over out there again. Well, speaking of which, it's bin day tonight, isn't it? Oh, brush. It may have lived a little longer, but today, nah. It's, it's probably going to get denoted from horrible jobs to awful jobs after this. Oh, dear. Yes, the poor brushes do get retired down in stages until they just can't be paintbrushes anymore and they're nothing more than the stick that once had bristles. I can think about it. I think we did this one in green because we ran out of black. Or white, or both. Oh, we're getting there, slowly.
hates bin days because they don't collect large furniture. You, you have to get large furniture collections. Most local authorities let you, they will do that. 30% of all payments on Etsy. Okay. Uh, this, I'm going to have to back read a bit here. Excuse me. Okay. Seems like his fr friend conned him out of X amount of ad revenue was because she wanted to play button and they basically shrieked themselves. I hate bin days because they don't take large furniture. It's thirty percent to take of all payments on Etsy. They give us skip every three months to, and they empty oh, okay that's fair enough you know doms i thought about that for mine with a skip there used to be a time when all local authorities would go to a community and drop a skip of varying sizes to the communities you know dependent on the community needs once every year and uh i'm sad to say i think it was around 95 in most places in the UK they stopped doing it funny enough that was under a Tory government ah, what a coincidence and now those same people that stopped it complain about certain housing estates looking like trash heaps well you made it so that the people that couldn't afford to get rid of large furniture for the extortionate prices had nowhere to put their large goods that they now had to accumulate in gardens and driveways because they don't have the money to get rid of them. Loose bristle. I knew that was going to start happening. Oh, sorry, camera. Sorry, people, for the earthquake camera. Just pulling out a rogue bliss bristle that's just come off the brush and got stuck into the paint. Kind of expected that to start happening with the amount of painting abuse this poor brush is taking. How did that get missed? I've painted that bit about four times. Is that an area that might not be primed, I wonder?
I really don't like how this arm's wobbling. It's like it's not connected properly somewhere. I'm surprised if that pops off. Probably not enough glue on it. That can happen, especially on these bigger models. Right, let him dry for now. When they switch to social housing as separate item compared to where it would be count, yeah, but we actually still have council estates here, so we've got social housing and council estates, and even then, the council used to do it for the whole village, and some social houses will actually do it as well. It, it just depends on your housing association and if they're skin flints or not. Or if they like mine and waste money on completely pointless projects. Right. Uh, While well, that one's drying, let's have a look at Praetor here. Oh, he's mostly black as well, isn't he? Okay. That can go over there a minute. That's going to need to come here for a minute. And I can see I'm going to need to get the stick out to do his head. Right, so we need the decent snips. There. I might keep a part of that on so I can use it as a glue platform. Oh my. Okay. Pair of snips. We'll put those over here for now. That it didn't dry like I was worried it was going to do. Come on. Or did it? Back from cell phone. Or was it phone call? Welcome back. Temporary gluing him to a temporary stand. He will not be staying on that stand. That's why I kept some of the sprue on him. Um, because that will allow me to lift him off later properly. Oh, I think we sprayed him with the lumpy one, didn't we? Oh, did I just... Somehow managed to spray spider web or something onto this one. Not quite sure how that happened. Just waiting for him to dry to his base. But uh, looking at how this paint has gone on this one, I think it was the 
spray can that had not very well mixed primer. No, this was the grey one that was, remember it came out in splatters of dry paint. I'm so glad I've got these in front of my eyes right now because that would have gone in my eyeballs. Some primer in a minute. I think it's in this. Yeah, I can see it. All right, it's in the Citadel paint box. Why I like my glasses easy to protect. Yeah. You've only been in 10 seconds, Cat, and you're already going back out. So for those wondering, there you go. It's surface primer. Can't remember what make this one was. It's Vallejo. There we are. So that's a Vallejo, one of my few airbrushes, paints I've got around here somewhere. But yes, you can use this like a normal paint. Dob it on a wet palette. You don't need a lot of it because obviously it's actually designed for airbrushes. Just put that down there for now so it's safe. Um, need a half hour. I use brush for horrible jobs. Those areas the primer couldn't get when I sprayed it. It's going to be black anyway, so it's good to have it. Let's have a look at our big dreadnought in a minute. See if that area that I think might not be primed needs it again. If that can go through there and dry now. Yeah, so I now have reason to believe that that may not be primed. everywhere i've already painted about eight times it's gone back to being white that's definitely a sign it wasn't primed there we go that's better since i'm not working with metallics at the moment i'm not too worried about cross contamination right that's still not ready okay this glue's taking a while for a glue that's supposed to be taking 30 seconds doesn't half take a while. Yeah, you, you stay there and dry. We'll, we'll just pretend you don't exist now for about an hour. So we were going to start on this one. But apparently the glue doesn't want to behave. So we're just going to stick it over there and ignore and pretend it doesn't exist. Right. Meanwhile, we'll just reprime areas that look like they need a bit of priming. Mm. 
Oh, flip. Look at that one. I'm not fully painting properly. I have used, okay. I check in and out cat. Yeah, she's a yo-yo cat today. It seems when it's stormy weather, she gets really weird. Put some more Abaddon black up to this. Make it a little bit darker. Now she's come back in again. Hey. Hopefully that'll find the place is not primed and stay primed. You can see how messy a blade brush can be here, look. Its head's okay, that can stay in its box. Oh, yeah. Right, so we're waiting for the black to dry on that one so we can get on with the next bit. Let's have a look at this guy. Hate it when the glue. I don't know how it does it, but it turns into like little white mushrooms, no matter how little you put in, and it crystallises around the feet and ruins all your good work. A few highlights with this stuff now just so it gives it a more rocky natural feel. I have used that as a mix for metallic paint. Uh, you can actually get metallic primers if you really need that. 
Well, I've allowed you to do a huge range of metallic paints. It just depends what you need your paint for, I guess. Um, hmm. Already got a spider web dust on it. Yeah, he just needs a couple of highlights and he's done. But I don't want to work with the colours because I do have currently very dark water. Yeah, with rocks, the urge to go completely um, perfectionist is something you must try and learn to avoid as well. Rocks, brick, stonework, you need to be random. Nature's random. Let your rocks be random. Yeah, you can actually see the sword on there now. If I bring it up. Couldn't see it very well yesterday. Now you can, so it's coming up nicely. My 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 raspberry and aloe vera drink. Absolutely great for the voice when you're streaming. We will let that dry and then I will try and glue Corswain to his base so I have a better means of handling him. Right, so let's bring out the big thing again. He should be dryish by now, mostly. Okay, so colour code time to look at. We're probably going to be working with metallics. Yep, yep, we are. Some bats. Where's the book gone? There it is. Ugh. The Codex. I feel like a chapter master right now. <laughs> if I can get the book the right way up. So, his claw is red and silver. His gun is non-existent so the claw is on this one isn't it? the other claw oh checked you want a black and red one for the claw as well right so we want rust and mud on the drills Black and red for the main bit where the pincers attach. And then the actual pincers and drills themselves are metallic. Right. Oof. Okay, well. There's the metallic. <laughs> Here we go, folks. I'm going to change up my music. It's getting a bit too chilled. And it's making me sleepies. I do not want to be sleepies. <laughs> ah, ow. That's more like it. The folk tales of Giri and Freki and Garm. Yep. That Kilo Drake got a new arc on the Game Pass. Okay.
or we could accidentally drop him on this side. Yep. As long as he doesn't come off his base and break into bits. Going to jump off and get an early start tomorrow. Have a good evening. All right, stay safe, stay well. Have a good evening and good night, Lone Wolf. Thanks for popping by. Thicker than I'd have liked.
Oh, she really isn't going to survive this model, I don't think. Oh, she knows again.
So his guns are gold as well, okay. It's going to be lots of fun. It was becoming lumpy on the brush, so that had to come off. Another hair bristle that got stuck into the paint there. Well, our base coat ink that was dried into the black layer.
probably not going to go all the way to midnight tonight. I mean, it depends how engrossed I get in my painting. Only on the grounds that I have got a housing inspection tomorrow and I need to be up early for that. Uh, they're coming at around 8, so I need to try and go to sleep around half 11. So that my body will wake up in time. I mean, if I get engrossed in my painting and I lose track of time, well, but kind of my own fault. I just felt I should mention it given as it's four minutes past ten. I meant to mention it earlier, but forgot. Such is the curse of ADHD. You remember things at random times. Often at quite irrelevant times sometimes. I mean, the inspection was supposed to be today, but uh, the guy that does the inspections had to be at two ends of the diff two different ends of the country on the same day, so he would have had to have come here, and then his other housing inspection that he was going to do in a completely opposite end of the country, he would have had to have been here five minutes and then gone. If he had any hope of getting there before five. <laughs> so he rung me up this morning and asked if it would be okay if he could come tomorrow so he could put all of his southwest appointments in one basket so he didn't have to travel multiple places across the country and that just to come back down the following day. And I agreed to that since the other houses are just up the road from me. So I was like, yeah, you know what? That, that actually makes sense. Come see me tomorrow instead. He sounded really quite relieved. I'm not being overly accurate with my silver at the moment because I've got to go back over with the Abdon Black anyway. Just catch all the places it's missed. Obviously, I'm trying to be as accurate as I can be, but I'm not too worried about missteps.
which paints on those bristles now. Not going to worry about those metallic bits for the minute because we're going to be doing a lot of painting over that area. I'm already starting the prawn. Got to keep uh, training my back out of that. I'm trying to train it into being a proper back to stop the, me getting the osteoporosis hump. But when you're a painter, you do the prawn, which just aggravates the situation. I me, I'm probably going to get an earful from my doctor. Ah. Where that spider didn't make its little nest.
I've got some areas of black to repaint because I can see a lot of green. I'll let the metallics dry up first and then I'll get in there. I'm going to be moving to the brighter colours, which I really don't want to do while I've got a whole bunch of darker colours knocking about, not to mention the metallics. That good, nice. I'll put me up and there.
Now, if you're wondering why I mixed that Abaddon black into the primer, it's because there's actually some parts of this model where it looks like the primer's either chipped off or missed altogether. So it was just going to be advantageous to just have an Abaddon black primer. <laughs> Although that said, the model still seems to be rejecting the primer, despite having a warm surfy scrub for over an hour beforehand. The problem I've been finding with Citadel lately is paints do not want to take to their resins. I'm actually of the opinion that whoever decides the resin should be made to paint them first so that they can make better decisions on resin. This fails to take after this, I will be putting it into some wing cleaner and hopefully getting whatever is causing this off. But we shall see. Yes, this would be coincidentally why I haven't glued his shield on yet. Sometimes it's actually in your interest to only part assemble them for the sake of getting into places that are otherwise impossible to reach.
and the reason I'm repainting this in black is because unfortunately quite a bit of his cloak doesn't appear to have gotten as much primer as it needs. I don't know what the idea was to have his cloak be white on the, underneath, but I think we might go for a different colour, like a dark green. What with his armour being black and everything. Gonna need something to symbolise from Caliban. You're playing some Blood Bowl, okay. He has me painting his armies while he paint plays Blood Bowl. I need to do a 40k version of Blood Bowl. That would be hilarious. No, it needs to be Blood Bowl with 40k and Fantasy Warhammer.
be here to get a little bit of better light.
hair in the eye. Uh, right. Unused brush. Any time you'll see me licking the bristles, folks. Don't you start now, hands. Oh, there they go. Never mind. Luckily, I'm going to do another paint of black over in a minute, but I want to get the really bright green eyes in. So you can get some idea. They're not perfect, but uh, I don't know if you can really see. I oh, can sort of see them. But uh, yeah, the paint's kind of come out of where it's not supposed to, so they are a bit bigger than I'd like them to be. But I'll be going over that again with some Abaddon Black, and I'll take out all the mistaky green bits. The, that green is pretty runny. There's my fist on red I want.
You are being stalked by a little meep. We're talking about cats, if you're wondering. Head dry. Unless they've at it. Oh, grief, wriggle out of the prawn again. Personally, you forgot to phone a certain person today. Better give him a buzz tomorrow evening.
Not the wrong one. No, I think it is. I'll we'll be putting into the brighter colours, so So we're gonna be doing yellows, reds, whites and silver. And I'm gonna be calling it a night night, so That'll be for another night then. So I will see you Saturday, hopefully, for the usual gaming challenge day. Uh, we'll be going back to Witcher for this Saturday. As last week, what? Oh, sorry. Weekend before last was a special occasion um, in that. Dragon's Dogma 2 had just launched and we wanted to get that um, so we could all have a look at how that played. Uh, me and Ojin are put, currently putting together quite a lengthy video where we're going to be discussing the pros, cons, improvements and bad points. Um, as I've said before, I do warn that it isn't going to be a critical review. But remember, this doesn't mean we think it's a bad game. It's just that we don't believe in giving empty platitudes. So, you know, we're going to be... Right, okay. Um, so we don't believe in um, empty platitudes. So when it comes to... Uh... Dragon's Dogma 2, we're going to be going quite in depth, uh, comparing it with its predecessor, Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen, about the bits we think they've done badly in Dragon's Dogma 2, and which things we think they might have improved in. So we're not going to be, you know, so critical that we're not going to mention the good stuff. We will be mentioning the good stuff. But unfortunately, that like I said, there's, there's a lot to cover. And as we're playing through it, and we're going through our new game pluses now, we're finding more bads than good, sadly. Um... Do I think those some a lot of those bads could have been avoidable? Yes, because a lot of those bads are actually bugs. So we will be going through that. I will be trying to capture game footage of what we're talking about at the time we're doing it. So it will have little clips so that you can show so I can show you and you can understand what's going wrong with it. 
because again it's, it's not a bad game but it is a game with bad points there is no such thing as a perfect game we all know that but it will be a critical review so i want people to know that and the super super fanboys out there that only do um sycophantry don't bother wasting your time because you know if you're going to start with the hate and stuff in, in comments we will just delete your comments and shadow ban you so be aware of that we don't put up with nonsense so yes uh we will be doing it and it's a case of it's not bad to be fanboy but if you're a true fan you know when you need to be saying critical things because it's this little thing called critical feedback and critical feedback is important for making improvements because it tells you where you're going wrong so that you can correct that wrong and go, yay, okay, let's let's make it better next time. Or if it's a bug that's something that can be fixed in present, then you can fix that. You know, I'm not expecting perfection, but I am expecting some level of professionalism. Um, some of the bad points, though, as I will discover, you will discover it's me going into the microtransactions. While they are game-altering, per se, to a certain degree, there is something to do with teleporting, which I will get into um and and let's not forget the resurrection while you can acquire them in game my god are they expensive in game they actually make it painful and i will go into that into the the deep end of that so we will be doing a critical review but as i said it will be covering the good and the bad and the areas of improvement and the areas where they got it right so it, it will be, as they call, a uh, Ossic sandwich. And those of you that have been around me long enough by now should know what the word Ossic means. So, uh, yeah, um, I will see you Saturday, because we're now not doing the Fright Night Friday, owing to the fact that both mine and Ojin's demonologist cannot run the new map, because we did a pre-stream run of it today to see if we could at least round up on the bugs because if there were the bugs i would have been reporting those but we can't even get the game to play so yeah <laughs> well it plays it's just unplayable it's too laggy you can't do anything so that won't be me doing fright night fridays now uh grimsy might be so be sure to go check out his channel i don't know if kilo will be joining him um because uh Everyone seems to be having reasons to uh, not commit to what they said they were going to commit to. Because life's like that. So, yep. Yeah, um, so be sure to go pop over onto Grimsy's channel. And uh, I'm not quite sure what he'll be playing, but I know it'll be horror game related. So do pop over to him and go check him out. Um, and I will see you Saturday for Witcher 3 wild hunt we will try and get through that and then sunday uh it will be random games night where i am going to pick a random game in my playlist to play as i don't have a video capture card at the moment i can't catch some of the older games you might want to see T K I had a clear on twitch events list okay whatever like i said kilo life is just gonna life okay um so yeah see you saturday for witcher 3 and sunday for random games night and hopefully next wednesday and thursday at 8 p.m ish painting it all depends what's going to be going on in the background what dwp stuff i have to be doing what legal stuff i might be needing to do medical stuff and other things because life is chaos right now and I'm not the only one that it's chaos for, as Kilo can attest to, because it's chaos for him too at the moment. Um, so yes, our streams are going to be a little bit erratic, but I am going to uh, try and keep weekends on track at the very least. Randoms game nights, just so folks know, could also include painting, because we do consider tabletop stuff gaming. Um, it will depend how I'm feeling what mood i'm in and what games i've got and i've got a few games i would like to showcase which is why i have it there uh, kilo says he hates my name kilo 
Wait another five years and you're going to hate your whole body. Everything that pops hurts times ten. And if it hurt before, times ten on top of that. Yes, it's called getting older, folks. I know, but you're going to hate it more. Talking as someone that's already up here into the life, the universe and everything being the answer to it. Yes, I know, folks, I don't look my age. The secret is staying out of sunlight, by the way. Um, so, yeah. Okay, see you all on the weekend. Kilo, don't do anything I wouldn't do. And then even if I would do it, double check if it's good for you. <laughs> okay, I'll see you all soon, folks. When I find the right screen, that is, there it is. Right. Have fun with Kong. So they're outgoing movies, yeah. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. And if even if I would do it, check that you're not going to get injured from it. See you later, folks.